If you've been watching my channel for a while now, you know I'm a big fan of videos that are fun and entertaining, photography related, all that and more. Well, in this video, I got something for you. Two flagships from different eras. We're gonna put them head to head. That's right. You ready? Let's rock and roll. What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. Thank you for joining me. Today in this video, I'm putting two flagship cameras head to head from different eras. In this corner, we got the flagship from 2022, modern times, modern era. You guessed it, the Nikon Z9. Right there, guys, the Nikon Z9. 45 megapixels, mirrorless. <laughs> the top of the line, top tier Nikon flagship camera from today. And in this corner, from 2008, made in Japan, 24 megapixels, we have the Nikon D3X. Who remembers the Ultimate Warrior, WWF? When I was a kid, the Ultimate Warrior was my favorite wrestler. I remember that music, that intro, that long hair, those, you know, those muscles and... The guy was just a hero of mine. This Nikon D3X is the ultimate warrior. Wait a minute though. There's no lens attached to these cameras. What lens are we gonna pair it with? The Nikon 400 millimeter 2.8 G VR, the king. Fastest super telephoto lens of past decade. Right here, baby, the 400 2.8G lens. This thing was over $10,000 in its time, in its decade, not too long ago. There's the 400 FL, which is the successor. This lens is capable enough to rock the world. 400 millimeter G. Yeah, we got the FTZ adapter right here. We can couple that with this. And we could rock and roll. I can't wait to shoot some pictures. <laughs> I have two flagship cameras side by side here in each corner. These cameras uh, were in 2022. This is the top of the line camera. This is, was the top of the line camera in 08. We're going to see the differences. And in case you youngsters don't know, the Nikon D3X, you millennials out there, this camera does not record video. Are you shocked? <laughs> you turn the power on and you're ready to go. There's no 1080p, there's no 4K, there's no 8K, there's not even 720 or 480. You know why? Because this beast does not shoot video. This camera does stills only. This is a photography camera only. So that means you just turn it on and you're ready to shoot pictures. How good does it take pictures? Does it stack up to today's technology? Well, today in this video, we are going to see for ourselves. I got one of the best lenses, one of the best Nikon lenses of all time. I know. You're probably thinking it's not a fair fight. 14 years is a long time. This is a 45 megapixel camera. This is a 24 megapixel camera. Well, you know what? I don't care because I'm curious to see what the differences are, what the color situation is, the sharpness, if there's any differences whatsoever with the sensors. Let's have some fun. Let's rock and roll. Before we go out and take some pictures, we gotta talk about this, uh, this, this, this beast right here, the 4028 VR. I know you guys been lusting over the Mac Granger videos. I know you guys been watching the Matter Win videos. They have the 400Z, how great it is, how amazing it is. It has a switch. 
you can switch it to a 1.4 times teleconverter. You know what? I have my own teleconverter. <laughs> In this scenario, I don't need to switch. You know why? <laughs> I just put my teleconverter on here and we'll just rock and roll. <laughs> so, yes, the 400Z looks great. Yes, the 400Z is amazing. Yes, the 400Z is $14,000. Plus tax in uh, Los Angeles, that's uh, about $1,600 extra. Yes, you heard that right. $1,600 buys you what? Buys you a uh, 105 1.4E lens. <laughs> All that money to tax. All that money gone just to buy that 400Z. No thanks. Not right now. Yes, in 2022, this will deliver the results. I know it doesn't matter what lenses or equipment looks like. You know, like I know when people say, oh, it just doesn't look good. Or you have to admit this 400G, especially the 400FL, they look sexy. And I even told my Granger that. I go, hey, Matt, that 400FL is a beast. I don't care if you're sporting the 400Z. <laughs> Anyway, guys, enough with my silliness. Let's go. Let's take some pictures and let's see the differences between the Nikon Z9, the Nikon D3X. DxOMR compared the D3X versus other cameras in the industry, and it gave it some interesting marks here, as you see here, versus the Sony, the D4, and even the Phase 1. Check that out. And this is DxO Mark. You know how I feel about scores, but you know what? I thought I'd share this. You know, D3X got an 88, which is really good for a camera back in the day, right? All right, I'm ready to get started with this experiment. The Z9 with the 400 28 and the Nikon D3X. So here's a fun tidbit. The Nikon Z9 registers the lens name a little different, as you see here. Uh, the Z9 is on the right, and on the left we got the D3X. The Z9 registers it as VR, 400mm, 2.8G. And the D3X, you see, just 400mm, 2.8. So <laughs> I thought that was a cool little fact to point out. Both cameras are set shooting raw at full quality, highest quality available. Both doing a phenomenal job and I'm very surprised at the results. Now this first set of images, the white balance was set on auto. I was curious to see what the camera reads as auto white balance here. The D3X on the left, the camera is reading it at a little bit of a warmer color temperature. And on the next set of images, I set the color temperature identical to 5800. As you see here, I just wanted to see the differences between the colors in both cameras. Now let's zoom in here and see the sharpness and what the camera reads. Now again, the D3X is 24 megapixels. The Z9, you know, already 45, almost double, almost double the, the resolution. The D3X is producing rich colors. I'm very surprised at these results side by side. This set of images, I'm going to go ahead and raise the shadows on both images and see the noise factor between the two cameras. As you see here, interesting result here about the, the color shift and the bokeh. And the D3X is producing this, it looks like an artificial kind of a bokeh blur color shift there where the z9 is smoother interesting results here the d3x set at 14 bit color as well so i'm going to go ahead and raise the shadows at 100 percent on lightroom as you see here i raised the shadows let's zoom in here and let's see if we see any type of noise factor or artifacting whatsoever both files look very clean when I raise the shadows up all the way. Now I raise the exposure up to one point on both files. What do you guys see? Which one do you like better? Let me zoom in here. Now, given that the D3X, we're at ISO 100, it's doing a great job, even though the shadows are all the way up and the exposure is set at one. 
Uh, let's go with the Z9. Same thing. Zoom in and see the noise factor at ISO 100. And you see, which one do you guys like better? Mm, a little torn. I like the richness of the D3X files. Okay, moving on to another shot of the roof here, the house. Let's go ahead and zoom into each file. Interesting results here. I kind of like the D3X file, to be honest with you, a little better here. Um, what do you guys see? Let me go ahead and crop this image a little more so we could see. Here's the D3X. I don't even I'm at like 400% here. Uh, crop. There's a Z9. Both have great results. Both are showing great image quality when you're zoomed in that far in. That's how much we're zooming into the image, guys. So great, great resolution on the Z9. Uh, but the D3X, very surprising results. I'm liking it. And as you could see, the D3X, even at 5800 Kelvin on a set of both cameras, the D3X shoots it a little warmer. It's a little warmer at 5800. Let's zoom in here and see the detail of each image here. This is at 2.8 on both lenses. Again, guys, same settings on each side by side comparison, even the shutter speed. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm using the same lens. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting one shot, taking the FTZ and the lens off and putting it on the D3X. No adapter needed. Here's this shot at 2.8 guys. 2.8 here's a d3x file 24 megapixels i'm cropped in heavily at this point here's the z9 the z9 is oh, look at that detail the z9 though but interesting set of results here and i'm gonna go ahead and crop the corner at the bottom here and see what we see the d3x it's holding its own for 2008 camera is holding its own but which image do you like better here's a uh, shot at f4 both lenses at f4 so but i was very surprised the 400g is such a special lens that even shot wide open it's very sharp here at f4 and 5.6 so 5.6 the setting on the 400g yeah the d3x file is a lot warmer than the z9 file okay moving on here to another set of images both shot at 2.8. Let's go ahead and zoom it in here to the fence. The rich colors of the D3X, and mind you, this is straight from the camera raw files, nothing tweaked, no sharpening added whatsoever to both files. Just thought I'd add that. Look at the levels on the right there, all the sliders. The rich deep blacks on the D3X. The Z9 is doing a great job as well. Interesting tidbit to let you guys know about. Obviously, the X Speed processor was in its infancy when the D3X was released. The Z9 acquired focus. I was at single focus point. The Z9 acquired focus heck of a whole lot faster and more accurately. The D3X somewhat struggled here in this image, acquiring focus, autofocus on that uh, fence link and you know it acquired focus but the z9 was instantaneous the z9 knew that i was trying to focus on the fence the d3x struggled a little bit but then it you know kicked in obviously the x speed 7 processor 14 years in but look at these results this is interesting results i'm really liking the d3x file the colors these images are both at 2.8 now we're gonna do some experiments here. This is at F4. Yeah, guys, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys see in these results and what stood out to you. Now, we're gonna do a noise test. We're gonna raise the ISO in a minute and we're gonna see what we see as we raise the ISO on both cameras shooting side by side. Interesting results. I'm really liking uh, the noise factor when I look at the D3X files. Now, let me raise the ISO a little bit. Here's 500 ISO uh, shot at 7.1. The D3X file, it reminds me of that film look, that film grain, that, that 
green that you see when you're looking at a color slide and that rich the richness of the color now i'm going to raise the iso a little more to 1000 and we're going to see here's 1000 iso on both cameras again 7.1 i just what i did was i lowered the shutter speed just a little bit so but you can see that the d3x file is starting to obtain just a little bit of noise the, the z9 is clean you know of course the z9 is clean but the d3x it's acquiring a little bit of noise but i like that noise again it reminds me of that film like look that film like look and uh let's go to the right as you could see the blown out part of the tree trunk from the sunlight let's go ahead and raise the iso a little more 1600 this is the nate the top native iso for the d3x and we're just getting started with the z9 but 1600 on both cameras this is you know pushing it to the limits on the d3x i'm still liking the results of both cameras but the d3x has this look you guys left me let me know on the earlier d3x video i made of this special you know the files of the d3x is just something special and i'm seeing it here side by side i'm seeing it for myself side by side comparison nikon z9 1600 d3x 1600 same lens same settings and the blown out highlight area of the sun hitting the tree trunk yeah guys i would love your input i would love to see what you are seeing love the rich colors here uh, obviously you could tweak these files these are raw files straight from the camera but it's good to see what the starting point is with each file produced now we're going to move on to another set of images yeah i'm liking the color depth and the color tones of each result a little different now this is where the lens comes to play and how special this lens really really is look at the detail of that thread that rope across hey it's the hammock but look at the rope look at the the detail of the rope now you get this from quality glass even at 24 megapixels the d3x right here it's holding its own here's the bokeh rendering on both uh cameras a little different from each other as you see z9 a little bit maybe a little smoother both exceptional but look at look at the thread here of the rope look at that quality you're getting and the d3x again it's holding its own with each thread it's really doing a great job i'm very very surprised we're talking about a z9 which is in 2022 the flagship of nikon in 2008 i bought this d3x for 500 us dollars guys and amazing amazing yeah dslr mirrorless but identical uh color temperature d3x a little warmer here's another example of the autofocus area of this image the rendering is a little different very surprised with this result here moving on to the next set of images here again this is at 5.6 iso 100 yeah both both uh cameras do an exceptional job however i'm looking at the d3x file and the other thing i noticed is the z9 is a little bit of crop we see a little bit of crop on the edges we're getting a little bit of a wider shot on the d3x with the dslr versus a z9 with the ftz adapter you see the little tree on the left there on each image uh the the d3x file is a little wider look at that and i'm not moving the camera whatsoever i'm not moving it i'm just taking the lens off and it's stable on a camera and i'm just putting the other lens on so i notice that the d3x file is a little wider just a little wider than the z9 file as far as the focal length and the image that we're seeing on, on the screen here both images look great uh, with trees and branches like this it's kind of uh, hard to see where it actually focused because there's so much going on with the leaves and the branches and the colors of both are exceptional what do you like better this view or 
the trees and flowers. Now I can see why the D3X is such a gem of a camera. I wasn't expecting these type of results compared side by side. And it's really, really doing a phenomenal job holding its own versus uh, the top of the line flagship of today. Using a Z9 with its amazing autofocus capabilities, its features, and obviously you get video and a ton of other extras. There is no comparison between what camera I rather own today. However, a camera that's launched in 2008 with results like these, this is definitely a bad boy. And you could see the reasons why and $8,000 in 2008. That's a big deal. Look at this. Look at the little bug there caught in the air. But look at this image. Look at the richness of the file. Look at the sharpness and the way it's rendering the colors. I really enjoy using. I love the results of the Nikon D3X. Now, and by no means is the D3X up there with the Z9 at all. I mean, the Z9 blows it away as far as the screen, the focus, the focus features, the speed. We're talking 20 frames per second, 5 frames per second. Uh, you know, you can't compare the cameras. They're two different tools from two different eras. The whole point of this video was to see image quality on photography stills only while you're shooting raw, looking at the raw files and comparing them side by side, you know, with the same settings on each camera. Both results are phenomenal. Both results are great. <laughs> Look at this with the smoke and the heat. Look at the heat. You can actually see the heat rising in the air. This is the beauty of a 400 millimeter. You, know, you can capture it. You can capture it with, you know, sharpness, the crisp, and you can see all the little details. Look at the heat. You can actually see it in the air. Look at this result. Let me zoom in. Look at that. It's beautiful. You can actually crop that and make that like an artistic piece on the wall or something. Play with the colors and Lightroom and have fun. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Well, there you have it. The Nikon D3X versus the Nikon Z9 as far as photography goes. No video, no frills, just photography stills. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. If you think about it, I mean, not too long ago, um, this camera, right? $8,000 plus tax, nine grand. This lens, $10,000, $11,000 plus tax. You're talking about a twenty twenty one thousand dollar combo right here. You know, I don't know what it is about this camera, but you know, I yeah, I bought the Nikon Z9 and it was a great experience, and I'm very excited to just unlock the many possibilities with that camera. But the D3X, it's something about this, you know, this old timer right here that I'm very excited about. You know, maybe because you know 10 12 years ago i was dreaming about owning this camera and i never did and now that i have it if you like content like this guys go ahead and like subscribe to this channel vahography this is a channel where we talk all things photography drop a comment i'd love to hear from you you know i love reading my comments hey guys if you have instagram go in and follow me on instagram vahography on ig all right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. I'm just excited to own this thing. I'm excited to just have it and take some pictures. Feel great. Man, this thing, man. Wow. I love the viewfinder. You know what? I don't care what anybody says. I love OVFs. <laughs> All right, guys. Well... We'll catch you on the next video. You know what to do. That's right. Rock and roll. Hey, what's good, photographers? Vahagen here from Vahography. If you like videos like this, go ahead and click on the videos on the screen for more content.